Hi everyone, uh, so this is Taru Hariharan here. Uh, really happy uh, to be seeing you all through percussion discussions now. And uh, it's my pleasure and honor to be conducting this for the first time uh, on behalf of Gappu. And uh, I have uh, been associated with Gappu for a few years now, a company that I got endorsed for. And uh, I've been using Gappu Cajon uh, and Shakers uh, for a very, very long time. It's one of the best Indian made instruments that I've ever come across. And uh, thanks to the entire team of Gappu for giving me this opportunity to uh, speak to and to interview with uh, or have a discussion with one of my best friends uh, in the percussion industry and uh, someone whom I really look up to, uh, someone who has contributed a lot to percussion herself. And uh, she's none other than, than uh, Joanne Labelle. I'd be really, really happy to uh, bring her into the conversation. But before that, I would also like to speak about Gappu uh, a little more. Because in India, it's very rare that you find instruments manufactured by Indians. And we do not use a lot of percussion instruments like that. I mean, me playing an indigenous instrument like Mridagam or Kanjira, of course, we use instruments made by Indian companies, right? But when it comes to performing an instrument like Kahoon or Shakers, we always get to choose instruments that are made by other companies from around the world uh, because of the quality that is assures, for sure. But when you also come to know that an Indian company manufactures instruments with such amazing quality and uh, durability and the sound, I perform on uh, the Gapu Kahun uh, and I've been using it for uh, recordings, for lives, for a lot of other, uh, you know, sort of performances. And I always use it in tandem uh, with my Mridangam and other indigenous instruments and it has worked amazingly well for me and I'm extremely happy uh, to be endorsing with this also a reason why I'm taking up this opportunity to you know share this much information with a lot of people uh, and uh, it's from my heart of how I feel about this company and about the sound of the instruments. So I will be really really happy to be inviting uh, my dear friend and a fabulous fabulous percussionist Joanne Labelle into the show. Hi! Hey, how are you? Hey. How are you? <laughs> Very good. So good to see you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm so looking forward uh, to our discussion. So happy to see you on the other side. I hope you're safe and well. Yes, yes. All is well here. Very good. Yeah, I think the last time we spoke, it was for our collaboration that we did. Yes. Those months ago, right? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, yeah that's, that's been, I think, in February, right? Or January or February. And since we haven't spoken then. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I was super looking forward to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. How is it in, uh, you're in Germany currently or in Canada? I'm in Germany currently. And yeah. uh, so on my side, uh, things are very good. I, uh, I teach at home. Concerts are slowly getting back to normal. We hope it stays that way. Yeah. And uh, as usual, you know me, I have many projects. So I have my online Absolutely. course. Yeah. Um, with Congress, like I think, I've seen, yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. It goes very well. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's rolling and I'm super grateful for it. Yeah. What about you? How is it going in India for you? Uh, lovely. I, I, was, I was having COVID <laughs> a month back, me and my family. I'm sorry to hear that. No, I think okay. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm grateful that it did not affect us much. It was mild, God's grace. It just came, you know, stayed for a while and it passed. But uh, back to the business, uh, taking classes, uh, attending sessions and, you know, doing performances online, uh, recordings and stuff like that. They're slowly getting back. So I'm, I'm really happy to be fine on the other end of the world. <laughs> Still yeah, be able to do I'm things. Glad to even, hear that. Yeah. Even though the condition in India is, is just still getting better and people are getting vaccinated more and more. So it's, okay. it's, it's really, yeah, I think it's, it's one day at a time. <laughs> 
That's yeah, exactly. Always wishing that it just move uh, move forward and in a good way, right? That we don't go back and that the music can be played and yeah, we can play percussion more and more at, as we used to do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, have you heard of Gappu before? Uh, I just wanted to check because there are few, very few companies from India who, uh, you know, do world percussion. You know, because cajon is not an Indian instrument; it's a world instrument. So, have you heard about yeah. this company before? That's have you true. checked their posts or anything of that sort? That's interesting you say that. Yes, I was aware of uh, the company before. As you know, I'm a minor endorser, so I, yeah. I'm already like very, uh, very happy with the instruments I have. Absolutely, um, yeah. I must say that from what you said, what I find really interesting is this uh, this idea that you have that it's an Indian instrument and that you're proud to play it. So it's a bit the same. Now that I live in Germany, I'm, I'm a minor endorser for yeah. many, many years. But of course, now that I live in Germany, uh, actually, when I, I got endorsed, I was living also in Germany, but then oh. went back to Canada. I got a little complicated. Okay. Um, but I'm also proud that the instruments are made here and uh, I, I actually create conceptualize at least here because of course uh, we have factories a bit everywhere but yeah I, I i found it really nice that you said that this kind of idea of okay it's it's made by people that that i know that are close by it. it's a local thing it's it's always good the same with the uh, food of course with exactly. uh, clothing to try to make choices that are make sense for us for the world uh, eventually and uh, so yeah so so i was aware of uh, the company but of course, I'm uh, already in love with uh, another one, so I don't want to. <laughs> but I'm so no, no. glad you invite me. I found that uh, I found that I must say super open-minded to invite me and have a conversation with you. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, I no, thank, thank the you company for that. Yeah, I mean, should be thanking Gapu for that as well. Uh, I think it's more about percussion. It's about uh, you know speaking about why we do what we do. It's uh, it's important as much as the instruments that we use, right? Because we. We are codependent. The instrument depends on us, and we depend on the instruments. It's it's really a sure. mutual relationship. So that's also one reason they are open to percussion discussions, and also to bring awareness amongst people of how percussionists are and how they are thriving in the world, and what are the challenges that they face. How has their journeys been all throughout? So uh, yeah, I would also love to know because. I remember we met for the first time when I came to Germany. You were such a wonderful host. Uh, I Thank learned... you so much. I was so surprised you came to Berlin, like just to to meet me, and I I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, <laughs> she's a bit crazy, right? She comes to Berlin just to meet with me. I was like, what? And you uh, you played the Meridian Gam for me, and we meditated also. Uh, yes. It was beautiful, really beautiful for me too. Yeah, and the Vietnamese restaurant. I think that we visited. I I do remember the church and the walks, and uh, that's one thing yeah. we miss traveling and getting to meet people from around the world. I mean, at least for me, I always make it a point that I meet the people whom I really seek inspiration from and adore, and whom I, you know, getting to meet such people at least uh, in person when that can happen, you know, again in the world would be a great thing. Uh, how much yeah. you get to learn about what they are how they do and why they're doing what they do i think that's really important but now that we have a platform to discuss such things i would love to know how you started your journey and uh, where were you inspired from and and a little bit about that cool okay i haven't talked about that so for a no. while now yeah. um so i'm uh, so basically my family i'm from canada you know that from yeah. the french part of canada and uh, my family, uh, there are no musicians in my, my small family. Like my, my mm -hmm. parents are not musicians, but uh, my dad always wanted to be a guitar player and he never, he abandoned. He thought like, oh, I'm so bad at it. I cannot play it and just uh, put it aside. And my mom always sang a little bit and we always danced a lot. So there was always, always music. It was very lovely. I danced a lot uh, as a kid. So the, the musical path was always a bit there, but percussion really, I fell in love with the uh, samba ensemble in Montreal. Oh. Uh, that I saw at a punk rock show because I was a punk oh. rock. I don't know about you, but as a teen, I loved <laughs> punk rock music. Um, so the rhythm already, like very intense rhythm, I loved that. Um, so when I saw this samba ensemble, I really thought, okay, I want to do percussion. Yeah. And then by curiosity, I got, I got introduced to conga. And I really, uh, I really fell in love with conga and thought, okay, this is where I want to be, the instrument I, I want to be serious about. So that was first. Yeah. 
And then I got lucky to get into a school too. We have a like music college. Uh, so I got into a music college in Montreal and then you know how it is like you get some offers uh, from bands, from singers, from festivals to play. Yeah. And um, it was fun because for example, Jembe, I got a gig where Jembe was needed to be played. And I didn't really know the instrument. So I was like, okay, I, I, yeah, yeah, I will do the job. I will do the gig. And then I got into djembe and wanted to be serious about it. So got in more and more uh, teaching and information. And, and it was always a bit like that. So then I was offered a gig with a rock band. So I thought, okay, okay I need to, to figure out how to play percussion in a rock band. And so, uh, yeah, from the studies, then it just exploded a little bit. And, and I, I became to love it more and more. And, yeah, it's just... Now I'm here and uh, I love it. That is my that that it is my main job. Yeah, lovely. Uh, how did you come across bata? Because bata is an instrument which is very rarely played by women, and I also see you play bata. Uh, I I don't yeah. know if you know another percussionist from uh, Sweden who plays bata. Uh, she was one of the first few players who went to learn bata, and uh, okay. yeah, I'll, I I it takes time for me to recollect her name, but I'll I'll get back to you regarding that. Yeah, she, Tina Kwati, Tina Kwati, her name is Tina Kwati. She ah. was a part of Filar Folket from Sweden, an amazing percussion artist. She was, I think huh. she's around 70s now. <laughs> and she went and okay, learned cool. Bata when it was absolutely a very ritualistic thing. So how did you come across wow. Bata? What attracted you to Bata? So uh, by learning Conga, I was, I, I got into this Cuban music yeah. uh, environment and yeah. I went to Cuba many times to study. Mm -hmm. So by my teacher in, in Canada and also in uh, Cuba, people were generous enough to, uh, to teach me bata. And I really, you know, that's very, as you said, um, it's, it's cycles of rhythms and it turns and it's very uh, trance-like. So, uh, oh, sorry, am I back? Was I frozen? Yeah. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Are you yeah, back? But... Oh, I'm, ah, I'm waiting for you. I, I can hear you. Yeah? Yeah, oh. I can hear you. Okay, I don't see you, but I, I hear you. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, I, I felt totally uh, into that world uh, out of interest, uh, musically, rhythmically. The singing is also very beautiful. And uh, that's, that's funny you asked me that because I, will, uh, I just got a, a nice grant to study more and more bata in the next month wow. with a master from Canada. Yeah. Uh, Henri Dupuis and uh, yeah, so it's really in Cuba, um, in Montreal, in Cuba. And then, you know, when you love something, uh, yeah, I just got more deep into it and the teachers were generous. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I don't hear you, but I think you're coming back. Hi, Joanie, can you hear me? Yes, now I can hear you, yeah. Okay, I don't know if, I mean, I am pretty on a stable network, but yeah, I'll, I'll try my best to keep this way. It, is, it, is it clear now? Can you see? Yes, yes, I can see and hear you, yeah. Okay. I can also try something else if we have a, another problem, but it, it seems to be back. Yeah, is it, is it from my side? I have no idea. You seem blurry to me, but I don't know how I look to you. <laughs> yeah, you look blurred as well to me. Uh, so, okay. but now it's better. Now, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, fine. Um, so, yeah, you are between Germany and uh, Canada. How is this balance going? And what is the reason behind the balance? Is it, is it because uh, you migrated to Germany or, uh, or you, you have a part of your family living in Germany? And how is it with it's, the music uh, as well? Yeah, it's a, it's a big question. I, uh, so many years ago, like I don't know now, it's uh, probably more than 10, 12. I had a boyfriend who was in love with Berlin, especially. Okay. So uh, out of uh, like a bit out of the blue, I accepted to move with him there. So uh, it was pretty hard because we moved there, not speaking German. I didn't know anyone. Uh, but at that time, I made great contacts in Berlin with a, a percussion school called uh, Groove, uh, Groove Centrum für Percussion, which is really, okay. really uh, cool. Um, 
And then it, I, I got more jobs in Canada. I split up. Uh, so I went back to Canada. And a few years ago now, so when, while I was uh, living in Canada, I met my boyfriend uh, who's German in Canada. Okay. And uh, so I got back to come more and more in Germany and uh, got back to my, my old contacts uh, from Berlin. And uh, honestly, like um, before COVID, I was really living both in Canada and in Germany. And it was really great. So I kept jobs in Canada. I was developing in Germany. Uh, so it was fantastic, super rich. With COVID, of course, I, I had to, to choose. So I decided to stay here in Germany mm -hmm. uh, with kind of my adopted family. And uh, I must say that it's a big challenge to develop the scene here. Yeah. Uh, but so far, I've been lucky. So some percussionists, for example, Max Grosswang is a very good... Um, German percussion is also Ellen Meyer that you know, yeah, I think. I've seen, yeah, uh, I do. Yeah, and she's really cool. Um, other, other people like that, they are like helping me to get really involved in the scene, but it, it is a big challenge. It's not that easy. And with COVID, the balance is lacking a little bit. I miss Canada, of course. Yeah, my family, my colleagues. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, when you said about the struggle, uh, so what do you think was your struggle point in your life as a percussionist? And uh, what do you think is a breakthrough that made you feel like, no, I'm breathing percussion now and this is going to be my life forever? Ah, oh, man, it's really instinctive. I think it's, a, it's the, I think it's the way I feel when I play and also the community feeling because, uh, yeah, I, the same as like when we did the we did the collaboration and I did a lot of collaboration with people in, in Canada a little bit here in Germany and I think it's this uh, percussion feels strong but also feel feels super connected to others so uh, this awareness of uh, the the drums vibrations too the also the um, so you're from India I'm from Canada um, I don't so in Canada I don't have you know a percussion language which is really mine we have a folklore there but I, I didn't really to make it short it's not uh, the percussion background I was not really involved into it mm -hmm. um, and it's not as much developed as the Indian language and the Cuban language and the African so uh, when I get into these traditions and I can express myself and I can um, um, in French we would say profiter um, I can kind of gain from it, like, like that people like you are generous enough to offer me knowledge and music. And uh, I think I have a feeling of, bl of bliss, really of bliss with all these traditions being shared with me and uh, people accept accepting that I play them and uh, that I share them. Yeah, it's like a fantastic journey, really. <laughs> Sorry, I got a bit away from your question, but yeah. No, no, no. You, you, you I think I think the breakthrough is when you realize that you need a you need a way uh, to communicate yourself through a tradition or by choosing a particular path, because uh, it's, yeah, it's it's important yeah. to gain the perspective behind why you play and what you play, right? You know, uh, when totally. when the culture has that, uh, it gives you more relevance to what you do and your art rather than, okay, I'm just picking up a percussion and playing what I want to. But when you gain relevance from the culture, from the perspective, where it comes from, its roots, uh, learning from someone traditional, the respect and the value yeah. that give you, that you give to an instrument changes, you know, ma multitude, I think. So true. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. I yeah and there is also this, the beauty, um, I, I got you, Mama Dikata from uh from uh, west africa i don't mm -hmm. know if you know him he he was a great master he just passed away uh a couple of, of uh, days ago oh okay um and uh so when mama Diketa passed away i really had this uh reflection about transmission and i think there is this beautiful thing in percussion uh especially in india but also of course uh, it's the same in africa and cuba um this transmission between uh, masters and students and and so linked with the culture also. So it's not just a, a rhythm for a rhythm. It has a significance. It's, it has a purpose. Uh, so I think nowadays, I also because I teach, I, I feel a responsibility to, uh, 
so to uh, to play the music well, the rhythms well, to know where they come from, and to have that knowledge, and also to transmit it because when we're not there anymore, uh, the music has to survive and has to be played and has to be exactly. enjoyed. So, yeah, now I have this uh, this thought too in mind. Yeah. Oh, that's that's amazing to hear because, I mean, from a place like us where we take this for granted. and for a perspective coming from mm. you it it means a lot because you know now i understand the sort of value you give to it after all this journey uh, of being in percussion for several years and seeing that truth where we grow with that truth but we don't value that truth too much uh, or you know in some mm. of the other way we we tend to move to the opposite side uh, and and uh-huh. and trying to widen it's it's always the grass is green on the other side right greener on the other side yeah yeah it it yeah uh, it's only yeah it's it's lovely to hear that from you and um, this is one thought uh, i i do carry a lot of times um, when we watch movies when we also listen to concerts there is always uh, you know a choice whether you can just entertain people or you can enlighten people or you know educate people with your music uh, so entertaining uh, may be something that that just leaves you wow and and just you know throw some magic at some people but educative is also risking yourself risking your position to try out something different um how do you see the relevance and the balance between these two things to entertain and to educate or to enlighten the audience how do you treat uh, oh. uh, yourself as an artist or a performer when you do that oh that's tough <laughs> uh that's a tough question i mean um so I didn't teach so much uh like before the last 5 years or so I was really I I considered myself really as a performer um and I think I was my my fuel was really how I felt so I I really liked the you know it's like partying it's like okay it's my moment on stage and I, I get there and I just give everything I can and I enjoy myself and then the response from the audience which gives you the feeling that you're doing the right thing so it's really like okay i'm i'm enjoying myself so much and I, but the people too so it's you know performing has this this amazing exchange where you you have a nice trip yourself and the audience too uh, but then yeah i think probably getting a bit older i i thought um i don't know like this performing thing is is cool but i also want to make something which matters i think then it goes more into the enlightenment so where you yeah. offer something which can be really heard and um it's like it's like food so that people can slowly discover enjoy and and eventually get in in a place of of bliss also yeah. um and the teaching as i said i i think is very relevant because uh what we do seems also very mysterious to a lot of people and not reachable and this i don't like so much so i'm i'm not a, i'm not a, a i don't have a a group beside really myself because i i like to think that everyone can do it. and i think mm-hmm. it goes into the teaching so when i perform it's cool but i also like to explain what i did so if other people want to uh want to enjoy themselves they can they can learn and discover how it goes so i think that's the balance for me the three are very important because they are complementary yeah yeah absolutely um i specifically asked this question because i personally felt a lot inspired educated uh, or enlightened to an ex- like if i have to put it that way uh by your performances i mean i vividly remember the performance oh, where you you're so generous no 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 i'm Thank speaking so the truth much. if i did have to come and meet you it's because it's it it just it just <laughs> you know was a fire wow. of passion that i felt um and from the time of meeting i Thank felt you. we were just time to meet as well um so i remember that one performance i saw on youtube where you were three girls standing and playing yeah. the uh, drums and it was such a, a, a taiko sort of a performance where you know there's so much of performance so much of art so much of showcasing uh, it was a dance and a percussion at the same time because such a tradition doesn't exist a lot of times and you never see women doing that it's always men doing it so when you break cliches mm-hmm. when you get into spaces where you feel you know i'm i'm just putting myself out there and maybe people haven't done this before but i'm doing this now uh and i felt personally that you were enlightening a lot of people to just break open those doors and go there and perform uh in ways that people haven't seen before so 
I thank know. you so I, much. I, I absolutely so much. love it's that so performance. Of you. Yeah. Uh, thanks. It's uh, yeah. No, t tell me. I, I was to say that it's a special project because uh, the two other girls are colleagues, but also friends for a long time now. Oh. And um, we really wanted to be free and to we wanted to s spend some energy and to be free into the creation. So each of us uh, was bringing one song, one percussion arrangement that then we were complementing all together and staging it. So with the movements and and the stuff that you saw and. Um, Yeah, I felt that the purpose was not to really, uh, we didn't have really a discourse of, okay, we're, we're women, we can do it, blah, blah, blah. We, we didn't have that at all. We just wanted to, yeah, to do what we wanted to do. And, but I, I received a lot of messages regarding these performances of people saying like, whoa, like it's rare that we see that. Oh, that's, uh, that's bold. That's uh, so, so I'm grateful for that. It's a, it's a wonderful surprise and, uh, and, and I'm happy if I can, Uh, you know, some some women opened uh, a lot of paths uh, for me before. Like yeah. uh, I have many in mind uh, right now. Please, and, uh, please, if you can share a few people of whom you got inspired from, and if you have names of women, I would be very very happy. For example, I, uh, I mean, of course, I, you know that I, I was really uh, inspired by you, but I was extremely inspired by um, Marlene Mazur whom I've been looking yes. forward to for so many years uh, and uh, many, many percussionists like that. Uh, give me some names that, uh, you know, women percussionists, especially if, if they have influenced you and whom you look up to. Local, uh, um, the, the first one, which of course uh, comes in mind is a dear friend of mine, Melissa Lavergne. Uh, a, a lot of percussionists, they, they know her. Um, drummers too uh, she's a wonderful player a wonderful person and she's she's a bit older than me and she started to play before me mm -hmm. so um she really opened some doors uh, locally for me in my my province of quebec so she was the, f the first one really doing the tv shows and uh um yeah really being a strong beautiful wonderful uh woman sometimes sexy and assumed and wow. assured and uh, playing the djembe and um, she also uh, went to uh, to uh, west africa to study also to japan to cuba so uh, so i think without really her wanting to open the path or again for for me or for uh, other girls I, I, she definitely did Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm super grateful for it. She also helped me helped me a lot in my career. There's also uh, locally also uh, Mireille Marshall, mm -hmm. is a percussionist from Canada who did the uh, Cirque du Soleil shows a lot. And uh, I also look more into. She played a lot of Brazilian stuff. I also uh, looked up to her a lot. So uh, yeah, these are the two. Uh, ah, there is a uh, Monette Marino Keita. Wow. Uh, that is super she, she's awesome uh, does a lot of African stuff also went a lot to uh, West Africa so yeah I, oh. I feel grateful that they, they opened for us before yeah yeah, I, I've never heard these names please do share these names ah, really? uh, in, in spelling yeah because the names that I've heard but I think people are, are people who are much much more popular uh, and, and that I came across uh, performing with Trilo Gurtuji or with Zakir Hussain. At that point, I, I knew uh, other percussionists amongst women, but very rarely did I come across the names that you shared. Uh, so I'd love to listen to them. Uh, cool. I'll uh, wrote in the, in the comments after the, the video is posted. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Of course, uh, uh, Sheila E is a, Sheila E is a, you, you probably know her, right? It's yeah, a, of course. Of course. It's a drama. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but she she's a great conga player. So she started with uh, hand percussion on conga when she was pretty young, and uh, there are amazing footage of of her uh, really just expressing herself very freely on the conga. It's it's beautiful. Oh wow! Uh, there's one more person who used to play. I, I I just cannot remember the name. One one who performed with Marlene Masur in her group, and she, uh, and she also also performed with uh, Erto Morero. And Trilo Gurtu mm. on the stage. Uh, I forgot her name. I'm sure I'll get it. Uh, and, and she also plays uh, congas just so amazingly well. I've watched them perform together for a Zildjian uh, YouTube video. Uh, if I, ah, if I just cool. can't remember the name. Of course, Evelyn Glenise, another percussionist uh, I've, I've listened to and, you know, look forward to a lot. 
but this name i'll i she has also performed with uh, marlin mazur for a very long time i i'll recollect her oh, name cool. and get back yeah um so right. so you are also an electronic uh, you know uh, producer uh, you are yeah. also a songwriter you sing you perform you play percussion uh, how do you uh, seek your audience like what is your target audience uh, what is uh, yeah that's basically the question i don't want to elaborate too much what is your target audience whom you look up to as uh, people who will come to listen to you because it's also very important to create your own audience and your own niche in in what you perform and put forward to yeah it's a bit right uh I'm, I, so my audience is people liking of course percussion and uh electronic music but not necessarily very like uh techno uh mm-hmm. kind of electronic music more um experimental yeah. uh and um i think my audience is people who like the the combination of softness and intensity so because that's that's my main uh fuel so i like these contrasts so the percussion can be super intense and then the vocals is pretty soft or the vocal is more intense and the percussion is very ambient and i oh my and um i think from te- teen- teenagers until uh it's it's a bit yeah for everyone who loves percussion and electronics and this mixture of contrasts this for again say i think <laughs> yeah i'm i'm sorry because of the you know connection issues uh i i lose i don't know if the issues from yeah i'm back I... you're back to me yeah uh should i try and change the network just give me a moment that cool yeah great okay um uh, yeah can you hear me clear now is it better yeah oh i think it is yeah <laughs> amazing yeah and uh, one more question so when you write music uh do you think as a percussionist or do you think as a singer because you are also a singer i stand in this place and i uh, sort of also want to know your uh, answer to it uh so did you start your career as a musician singing more or did you start start with percussion more and what influences your uh, composing or songwriting process oh yeah it's, it's, these are all uh, great questions uh so my career really i i started as a percussionist but in my life i started with the singing first mm-hmm. so it it was always a bit like mixed up um and when i compose my songs i actually start by the writing so i will start with a text so i'm oh. more like a an author <laughs> it's a bit weird yeah so uh, i like to make the words into music uh, instead of putting the words on the music yeah and uh my inspiration is a lot my fi- my feelings regarding what i experienced my travels were a, a lot uh, it my travels were really a good fuel for some writing and nowadays a lot also uh the news so i'm uh, very sensitive so i check the news and i'm i'm a bit uh, hit by it and then uh it it helps me to create new texts yeah well what about you when you compose your uh when you do your composition uh, how does it work um it depends again in this in some cases uh, i think i'm i'm more driven by the melody even in percussion that's how i find myself uh i want to be more melodic uh even though a part of me is pretty technical and mathematical at at a section because that's a tradition i come from as well and i'm very very fascinated towards it in fact my fascination comes from me deeply understanding that i'm really bad at it so <laughs> so whenever whenever oh, i ma. no i it, it it's challenging for me <laughs> to actually be in that space and try to bring up something that's uh you know very different from how i might think so i really mm-hmm. like doing that on on cool. the other side but i think a lot of compositions i mean flight of joy that i released or uh, anything else that came that super uh, was, yeah was mostly from uh, thank you so much uh, was mostly from the melody or as you say i also write so if it's my own language like tamil or uh, 
not Malayalam. Basically, if it's Tamil, I I write the text a lot of times. And and my percussion, I think my percussion is also very melodic for me. It's not that it has to yeah, totally completely Absolutely. break everything. Not that sort of a thing. It it has to flow. And there's always a melody in everything, yeah. you know, whether it is rhythm or percussion or even, uh, you know, in in the fastest complex uh, rhythm cycles, there is always a flow, uh, and there's always a melody with that flow that goes that keeps you enchanted Absolutely. towards it. So once you don't have a melody regard related to it, I think you lose the charm of enjoying uh, percussion also, you know. So. Yeah, that's true. For example, battle drumming. That this is a part, a very charming part about it is, you know, with these. three drums you have you have totally melodies and uh yeah i think you have a good point it is super melody too like uh, the african dundun your meridan gam is incredibly uh yeah musical and uh you have a lot of melodies there and yeah a yeah, good point yeah i think because i start with texts but then of course i put them into melodies so it it, it is similar i think yeah yeah well that's that's very true and and about you knowing mridangam was a very new information for me because i didn't check that part of your instagram post and when we visited that's exactly when when i knew that okay you also know mridangam and uh, uh, how long yeah. did you study mridangam for and uh, how do you think about that instrument you still perform or try and practice i now i haven't done it for a while i think uh, i was shy because you're so good <laughs> come on come on you are amazing but uh, <laughs> I did four years, and uh, my teacher in Canada is a Sri Lankan, Puvyala um, Ganmayaraja, is my mm-hmm. master, and uh, I did the classical exams, so that was very interesting because oh. uh, I <laughs> I did my first classical exam that I did. I arrived there like with I didn't know like he told me where to go and the time and to bring my meridian gun, but I arrived there in jeans and t-shirt. <laughs> Very relaxed. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing because you know, right? I didn't know. So, so I arrived there and I was like, everyone was so well uh, dressed, uh, dressed up with the sari and uh, and the flowers and everything. I thought, oh my god! But mm. um, again, everyone was very welcoming, and uh, I really loved that instrument. And it was fun- it was funny because I thought you knew me because I posted some rhythm gum not at all videos. So, th- <laughs> so that was very. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. Um, yeah, uh, that was I, that was that was absolutely like a shocking news when I met. It was like, do you really know Mridangam? You know, I didn't know about yeah. that at all. Yeah. I really, uh, I'm very curious about the Indian culture in general. That the uh, really uh, socially, also the the food, uh, the the architecture, everything. So, so the music too. I uh, um, and I saw, I. I got um introduced to Mridangam a couple of times so I think uh the first one was Trishi Shankaran wow yes yes yeah he's so, uh, my in, grand yeah. guru if i have to say my guru's guru ah. as well yeah so okay yeah and my he's in bo- canada right yeah he lives in canada i think yeah. in toronto he works in toronto exactly yeah yes So I saw him. Uh, I saw workshops of his at uh, the Berkeley, Bust, um, the uni- Berkeley University mm-hmm. in Boston. Yeah. And I really fell in love with uh, the Meridian Gam. So then I was always curious, and uh, I finally got a Meridian Gam for myself. So I, and I found a teacher. So uh, I got into that, and uh, it's just amazing because it's so medit. Um, it's really like a meditation. So beca- because. you know for conga or african music it, it's not really solo instruments it it, it becomes solo instruments uh but the meridian gam you really be, you really can be a solo artist and i was amazed like uh, so the first things i learned are these solos of like 7 minutes and i never did that for we don't have that for conga or timbales or so i was really fascinated and fascinated to just be able to sit at home alone and to make a complete music piece like if i was on a piano or yeah. or another uh classical instrument so yeah i just find it amazingly beautiful and rich uh language wise and yeah wow interesting and uh, you, and you you're a you're a big inspiration because you you play it so wonderfully and you're so advanced and your language is so so rich that uh, it also shows like the never ending possibilities of that instrument so 
Yeah, I still love it very much. I will get back to it. <laughs> oh, we should we should exchange instruments. I might play some cajon and maybe you can play mridangam for the next time. <laughs> oh, that would be a challenge. That would be a great challenge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um just just one uh, important question. You learn from some amazing teachers who are so adherent to their cultures. Uh like in terms of Jembe or from Giovanni Hidalgo if I'm spelling the name right. uh who have been such top torch bearers of their own tradition of their own culture uh how was it learning from such amazing masters and what did you get to imbibe as a musician but also as a human being from such yeah, amazing people yeah i got definitely uh, both sides so humanly and musically so it depends because some teachers i just had like once like a course and some others i had really like long term teaching uh giovanni it was also at berkeley university so mm-hmm. uh, i was there for they had a profession week a festival and i was lucky enough that uh, some teachers there i uh, thought my level was was okay so they oh. maybe i could have a i could have a class with giovanni i was way younger and uh, so i had a, I, i don't remember i had a good long class with him uh if i remember correctly and he was so generous and so open and uh he was just he's the kind of person just super happy to see you and to help you and he's very uh, spiritual too he was very spiritual now i haven't uh seen him for years and years um but uh i was overwhelmed because with his level of playing i was overwhelmed uh how generous he was and and of course he has this amazing uh, floating hand technique so from him technically that's uh, what i got or at least oh. what i got motivated to pursue um and uh for example two years ago i think i studied with aruna dembele yes. a great uh, african uh, djembe player uh grand djembe fola and it was different because i spent a month with aruna so i saw your post repeatedly and i was following them uh and when you said you know he's here and you're putting posts and you're learning you are even sharing those videos where you learn from him i remember you doing that yeah he was also very i mean i think generally these masters are very he was super generous and he was also very motivating because um djembe is so powerful and sometimes you know when i play at home or with friends or we're not in africa we're not in a really a village with people dancing and people expressing something so sometimes we keep it a little quiet uh, and uh, aruna was really i got a lot of strength from him because it was like come on come on joani when you play you you have to get it like uh, give it your everything come on more more power more muscle more, come on like and uh, this i really really liked so uh, Yeah from him I got a lot of power and a lot of uh, language from uh Ivory Coast which is wow. they have a special swing uh, there so yeah where did you practice though because i know the sound of chembe and it could be you know neighbors would be like <laughs> get off the place <laughs> could be even so loud so where did you even practice and were there people around who who were accommodative to it So with Aruna he has a he rented a studio there and it was music studio so everything ah. was was uh, soundproof so it was fine. When I play Perfect. at home we have a small house. Uh so uh I can play but the house is really shaking. <laughs> oh my. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Very powerful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um I have a few questions that the team has put together for a rapid fire round. uh okay yeah um so just quick answers for each one of them it's it's simple but it's pretty interesting too what is the first instrument that you got to play the first first was the piano oh okay and percussion percussion it was actually bongo i think bongo wow oh, nice um the cuban yeah. bongo was yeah oh okay but it's it's all related to cuba then you are a cuban girl in one other way i i felt like it at least <laughs> <laughs> yeah i really love uh, their their music and i'm also very interested into their culture so uh yeah i i think uh, i think everyone i crossed a uh, path with were generous enough to uh yeah to to respect me and and uh, get me in the culture a little bit yeah lovely okay what first got you into music like when you were very very young and 
just jumped into music um life is like the song life is life life Ooh. is life la la, la. <laughs> i um, um my mom always says that i first danced on this song so i would say that's that's this song wow wow and how old <laughs> how old were you then one year old oh. <laughs> amazing amazing um when uh, did you start writing your own music and what inspired you to do your first writing Ah this is actually in Berlin and uh, I had so much time not many friends uh and my boyfriend at that time is a very good music producer uh Merlin Etori is uh is in Berlin still and he got me uh solely to use Ableton Live and Logic and these oh. softwares and I needed to express myself so uh yeah that's why and when I started yeah Well and uh, how how old were you then So this is around 22 something. Okay. Wow. Yeah, 24, 22, 24, the songwriting, yeah. Okay. And until then you were you were more a percussionist than a songwriter. Yeah, only percussionist at that time, yeah. Wow. Interesting. Um any musician that you admire that you want to collaborate with? Anyone? Musicians? Yeah. Oof. Wow there are a lot uh because now I we talked about uh Indian music I I just thought about Anushka Shankar is one of oh. my uh, favorite so um and I would love one day to make a little something with her if she dare to have me because she's outstanding uh also Bjork is uh one of my uh favorites for a long long time I was time, just about so to, to something... ask about Bjork because your way of writing your songs was very similar to Bjork because it's like you put oh, your thoughts wow, down thanks. you put your thoughts down and then you make the music so it doesn't need to be that it's poetic it's it's meaningful much more than it being poetic because she uses words that you would not immediately think can be poetry you know uh mm. and and a lot of your words are words much more than they are poetic all the time and that's something mm-hmm. she's i don't know she's inspired me uh from that perspective and it's so lovely to see you write that way i was just about to ask the same ah thanks uh has bjork thanks influenced so you at some point or the other yeah yeah totally and there is this girl to uh, my brightest diamond maybe I, i should send you some link she's an american artist also very creative a beautiful voice uh so uh, yeah i would love to do something with her if if she wants one day yeah wow wow amazing uh there are some amazing artists endorsed by gapu uh, and otherwise uh, you know participating in this like i would just like to take their names sambhu chatterjee uh, who is an amazing drummer and uh, someone i've collaborated when i was very very young uh, and i've always looked up to and been inspired by his an awesome drummer and percussionist uh, there's a friend of mine called gayatri there's uh, florence uh, and so many of them coming and going off and the team of gapu has joined us and been throughout this entire conversation okay getting oh. back to uh the questions again what was your first show and how old were you then i mean leave the age but what was your first show my first show um so there are piano recitals but i don't think it counts as a show so i did some folkloric it's not canadian so my province in canada is called quebec mm-hmm. so i my first show was uh in quebec some folkloric quebec dance because oh. i did that too a bit like tap dancing but a bit more irish yeah oh nice <laughs> uh and is it like couple dance or like single dances no it's a, you can do uh, there are single kind of solos uh yeah. it's a rhythmical dance and so maybe that was also the genesis but uh at that time it was group group oh. uh, shows yeah oh lovely yeah <laughs> yeah Okay. Uh um, funny pictures of that when they I send them to you. Oh please, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Um and one last question. Uh uh what was your first uh drum kit? Have you been a drum? Oh. Yeah. What was your first drum kit and uh, uh how did you grapple with the stick techniques or you know to start playing drums? Aha uh-huh. so uh I must say now I I play a tama kit uh but I mi- I mix it up totally like uh so 
I've been for a very, very short, short, short time a uh, drum kit player. So I did that uh, for one uh, children's show many, many years ago. It was very short, very short career because then I started to mix the drum set with percussion. So it's, yeah. these are always hybrid kits. Uh, and I do that now with uh, my drama, uh, my drama, my Tama drum kit. Um, <laughs> drama, <that's laughs> drama, drama, drama kit. <laughs> Um, but I must say that my first kit was the Manukache Yamaha uh, kit, ah, very okay. hip, very small. And um, sorry, what, so you asked me the kit and what else? Yeah, yeah, the first first drum kit because I thought you were a drum kit player who graduated to percussion. That's uh, that was no, just my, no. actually not. Okay, I was really percussion player. I got a little bit into drum set, and uh, then I got into these hybrid uh, kits. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because hybrid kit is something I look up to, uh, having a really good setup of a hybrid kit because uh, that that is individuality that gives a lot of expression of your sound as well. And uh, that's another question I wanted to ask about your uh, picking of the instruments and uh, what is the reason why you have a certain setup and what is that in sound that inspires you to pick those instruments mm. to, uh, you know, portray yourself? Uh, that's interesting also as a question because usually um, as a sideman, uh, I will create the kits, uh, so the percussion setups regarding what, <coughs> what I think the music needs. So I will listen, for example, if you're a singer and, uh, or a band and you want me to put percussion, a percussion setup to play on, on your music, I will really customize each time. So I really had many, many, many different setups because for me each gig uh, needed something else. So this is very different from a drum kit player uh, because usually the, dr the drummer, he has uh, his kit or she has her kit and it's, it stays like that or you add some stuff but the, 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 the basic, the root is the same. Uh, for me, it's always, always different. The only setup I kind of uh, carry more often is really like uh, this uh, kind of, it's this hybrid with uh, conga, bongo, djembe, floor toms, uh, symbols and a lot of sound effects. Yeah. Um, my sound effects, I especially like uh, the um, African and Indian uh, sound effects uh, textures. So a lot of uh, dry nuts and a lot of jingles like you, you use for the, the feet usually and the dancing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I like to do, uh, so, so in a show I can like be more on the conga, but then one hand on the djembe, one hand on the conga, and then why not like, have a hand with the stick and the floor tom and you know it's uh yeah so that that would be like a the global setup i like to carry with me when possible yeah lovely and there have been questions uh beneath asking when are you coming to india next to collaborate and we would love to meet you sometime any plans yeah. to do that because you've visited india before uh yeah i think yeah with your boyfriend right if i'm if i'm right if you i don't know or or by yourself uh are you uh, planning to come anytime soon so I uh, I was in uh, I started in Kolkata and we followed for, for fun uh, Ganga. So we went to Delhi and then to uh, Rishikesh. Wow. Uh, but I actually I have a good friend of mine in Canada, John Toguho, who's mm -hmm. uh, from Kolkata, so India from Kolkata. And I got a chance to play with him in India. He's a musician, wow. and with uh, uh, Surajit Chatterji, who's a, a singer very famous in in Kolkata or in Bengali. Oh, okay. I don't know if I say his name well, but uh, so I, I already played uh, in India, and that was what a what a fun moment. And uh, does that mean that people, you don't want uh, to come again? <laughs> I want to come again. Yes, and uh, <laughs> I would love to come again, definitely. And we, uh, as you know, we 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 had a chat uh, with Sonia also from uh, Women of Rhythms. Yeah. Uh, to organize something. So as soon as it's easier to uh, to travel, I. I gladly come uh, again to visit and play in India. I, yeah, I would oh, be very, very happy. What fun would that be like? I, I can't even imagine how it's going to be because that'll be something, you know, I'll, I'll open my doors and windows so you have to just enter yeah! and stay with me, you know, visit our country oh, more and so meet, meet our team and, you know, just, just have some amazing time. Um, I'm ready. Let's get rid of COVID. I'm totally ready. <laughs> Lovely. So you're safe and you're fine and uh, all's going well where you are? 
Yes, 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 totally. So, so the same for you now that, uh, you know, Germany, the, the, everything is getting better and better and people are vaccinated. And so you can come also to, uh, yeah, you can visit again. And uh, now we know each other better. So we try to, to play and organize something. And yeah, the invitation is both ways, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just need to get vaccinated because I got COVID. I need to wait for my vaccination a little more while, I think. So, ah, okay. but, but yeah, but I think by the end of this year, I hope things will be sorted that we can, you know, meet just how we met the last time. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I just can't totally. forget that, you know, the entire experience of me traveling all the way through the tram, pulling all the Mridanga monthly to your place, taking it up and jamming yeah. and meditating. Wow. Uh, it was, it was such a fun ride. And thank you for being such a yeah. wonderful host. You know, taking all the time to Anytime. even come up to the train station and leave me back. Of course, uh, that was. Of course, you traveled all that, that way. <laughs> of course, you know, man. yeah, that was good. It was a bit magical, you know, a bit surreal. Yeah. It was very, very, very cool. I thank you so much, and I'm very glad we got the opportunity to make this uh, also duo collaboration yeah. for a, a pause festival and women of rhythms who, who are very generous and uh, yeah, yeah it, it's it's really cool so now we we have a show already so absolutely two compositions <laughs> in our pockets yeah exactly exactly <laughs> yeah yeah do you just want to do that corner cold chat if you do remember just few phrases of it oh Whew, we can try we can try i cannot promise but i should have revised that ah, I didn't oh, think about no it. it's yeah. okay i just thought it's, it's a good way to end the show with just so that we'll have yeah. an exchange of kind of code. Uh, ta, 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 Oh, you ended that. <laughs> Wait, but you, you, who say the, who says the ta, ta, and who says the, who answers now? Okay, can I, can I say ta, ta, like four times? So you can give the options. Okay, good. And then come back to me. Great. Yeah. yeah. Ta, ta, Talang gudinda. Ta, ta. Takitatum, takitatum. Ta, ta. Takajanu dinda. Ta, ta. Takitatum dinda. Ta, ta. Takataka junu. Ta, ta. Talangatum tatum ta, ta. Ta, ta. Takitatum, takita, takita. Ta, ta. Takitatum, tum, ta. Takitatum. <laughs> oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. So good to see you. Thank oh, you so, so much. You, you, you do such a great uh, interviewer. Wow, I'm, I'm very pleased. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, no, my pleasure. I, I, I had a bunch of questions, but the team, I think they also searched a lot about your bio and the things that I was supposed to ask. I was like, oh, you have written it all down almost. So uh, we had a great number of questions from the team and some of them bear developments from that. And of course, because I do know you to an extent, uh, I would also wanted to ask a lot of things that, you know, inspired you to become what you are now and, you know, uh, a person that we all look up to. So thank you so much thank for having me. Thank you so much. Here. You're so generous. No, thank Likewise, you. Likewise, I also uh, look up to you as a person and as a musician, definitely both. So I, I thank you very much. You, you're very generous. Always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Giovanni. And uh, we you. had announced a contest uh, for uh, people who were uh, tagging them, their two friends in the post about our percussion uh -huh. discussion. And uh, we will offer 40% off on uh, a cajon. So the winner for today is uh, Gayatri Nair. So I wanted to congratulate her for winning uh, a 40% discount on this cajon. So congratulations, Gayatri. Uh, you will have a wonderful cajon from Gapu with a massive discount. So yeah, yeah, that sort of brings us to the end of today's show. It's one hour all, almost. And I really did not know how the time passed by. And I got to know so much, so much about uh, you as, as a musician uh, and not just like listening to your music, but you know, uh, the entire journey behind what made you you. So I'm, I'm really, really grateful for Thank this opportunity. So I want to express my thanks to Gappu, the entire team uh, for managing this, uh, putting you uh, out with all those information yeah. regarding the interviews. And uh, yeah, I am extremely yeah, grateful for team. this opportunity. 
Yeah, me too. Thank you to all the team. Thank you very, very much. It's uh, yeah, it, it's been very, very lovely. Thank you. Yeah, and for all of uh, all of them who have joined this live, have been listening to us, and been a part of the conversation, asking questions. Uh, the amazing artists, uh, you know, who were a part of this. Um, some bit, I also saw Ganesh. I saw many other people. I'm sorry if I'm missing out some names. It's because the list goes long, and there have been a lot of questions beneath. So some of which I did ask. So I hope we'll catch up sometime soon. We personally will catch up uh, after this uh, because I, I really, really, uh, you know, uh, feel we have a lot more to share and a lot more to work <laughs> together with. So thank you so yeah. much, Joanie, and uh, thank yeah, you. all the best for all the endeavors. And I'm so looking forward to many, many uh, productions of yours and songs of yours that might inspire uh, many, many people like me. All around the world. Thank you. Likewise, totally likewise. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. Thank you, Joanie. Tia Matias, uh, is she your friend? I know. Sab, she's thanking you and me for this conversation. So. No, I think we don't know each other, but thank you. Thank you for everyone who was there. It was really cool. I, I saw all the, you, the little comments passing by, and yeah, thank you, everyone. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Take care then, and we'll catch up soon with another percussion discussion with uh, amazing artists from Gapu family. So thank you so much and uh, see you soon. Have a good night. Bye-bye. You too. Ciao. Ciao.